Hey folks, it's uh, Skull D. I wanted to just catch up with you guys after I've been gone for a little while. Uh, nothing bad, I've just been, you know, working in between an actual job and a role-playing game that I'm trying to develop called New Doggerland. So, I'm recording this kind of late, so if I sound kind of quiet, that's why I apologize. But, uh, yeah, I figured I would come back and just let you know what I've been doing. I've been playing a lot of RuneScape and some other MMOs, taking care of my child, and just trying to get through the days. Um, I've had some personal grievance lately. I have a family member that might be passing, and otherwise I'm just kind of going through the financial motions, but I still want to get back to producing the content that I enjoy making. Uh, I find that this YouTube channel it allows me to create a lot of educational content, things that I otherwise wouldn't be able to inspire myself to make. Uh, in that regard, I do want to go forward in saying that my future content is most likely going to follow a lot less scripted of a venture. I want to try to be a little more open with people and, you know, have a meaningful showcase of my personality, and sometimes I can be wacky, sometimes I can be quiet, sometimes I can be more, but I don't want to really judge too much on that. It's kind of cringy. Um, I do know that if I want to continue making gaming and history content, that I would love to be able to get more input from my audience and just know what it is that I can do to make my content better. Uh, and if you want to help me succeed, right now what I could really use is people just sharing around my videos and just giving me honest critiques. I understand if my content's bad, I would love to hear it, just until I do, I never know what I can do with it. Uh, so, not to push on much further from that, but you should expect a bit more frequent on the uploads, and I would like to move forward with actually talking about something neat, which is, for once, the video gaming that I do. So, in RuneScape, I've been starting off pretty uh, small time. I've been trying to work out what I want to do with it, and I've decided that I want to make a Merchant's Guild. So if any one of my friends want to come join me on that, I'm officially usually playing on server 42 or 41, respectively. You'll find me in the tuxedo and the red bolt. Ugh, boater hat. Uh, moving forward with that, um, I would like to surround more content with RuneScape because the community I found there has just been really nice. I mean, you do get your weirdos, but I feel like that's any place, but really it's just, it's been the nicest community for me to get involved with. And to that end, I feel like some of the content that I can make is towards some of the marketing and everything. So, as I'm showcasing in this video, you can see a lot of crafting between the gems. I went ahead and I bought like a bunch of gold ignits and some rubies and emeralds. I think I paid like six million in gold. I've been making my money via just like mining and doing it, but I wanted to quicken it up. I think in the future I'm going to make videos where I just mine all of it together and just put it all in a big stream or something. But what I really like about it is if you figure out a few items and you sell them at like 20% cheaper, they just instantly go off the market. For instance, grapes that drop off of guards, goblins, a lot of like simple creatures, they sell for like 10 grand a piece on there and you can collect I think a hundred of them for a million. And it's just, it's been a really great way to not only grind out your defense skill, but you can also just gain a lot. Uh, for rubies and gold, like I've been doing with the gems, it allows you to build up your crafting, your smelting, and your mining. Uh, obviously, I did a little bit of cheating by buying my material, but even so, I mean, I paid six mil in total, and that's six million, and uh, I mean, I'm standing to profit, I think I calculated at least like 25 million. Uh, total, though, I, I'm not sure if that's the best way of going about it. Like, I'll be completely honest, and only 60, 70 hours into the game, but I would be more than happy to stand that you could make a lot of money early on doing those methods. Um, 
some things in that regard I definitely recommend getting your hands on is obviously the first things you're going to want to get when you upgrade your smithing is a better ore box, a better pickaxe, and really grind out those dungeoneering levels to get yourself a gem bag. I think that gems really do up the quality of everything you're trying to do. From there, uh, my friends keep saying enchanting is a thing, but I haven't worked on any magic, so I don't know at all what I'm supposed to be doing there, but I'm sure we'll get there one day. Um, Rune crafting, smithing, all of these things have been my just favorite things to do so far. Like, I don't even know if they're the best things to do, I just know they're the fun things to do, and I would love to just walk away one day with being the best smither in the game. I'd, I'd have been watching a lot of this one YouTuber, he's like Cornello or something, and I really like that Like he just talks about the history of things, it just hits me the right way, and so when I'm just moving along and I'm playing the game, I like to watch those, and it's kind of funny and silly at my age, it's like, well, what are you doing? You're an at-home parent, you're trying to make goals for yourself, make money, and you're just sitting here like, you're gonna be the best smith in a RuneScape game, and it's like, yeah, probably not. But you know what? I have the ambition. We're gonna do it, folks. I think that going with that, though, if you're gonna start smithing, definitely stick with adamant gear if you can sell it. I find that adamant square shields sell very quickly. Because here's the thing with me and selling. I don't like to... I'm a very smooth brain person. I prefer to have immediate success. So if I'm gonna can just drop everything by 20% and make just a little bit less of a profit margin, but everything sells immediately, I love it. It's my favorite thing. However, my biggest downfall, probably my biggest pet peeve and I guess it's for balance because I can imagine with an open market it would be very dangerous to get into I hate just how little I can move at a time when I have to make 28 necklaces and move 28 of them at a time and I'm trying to make like a thousand to two thousand of them that's a lot of moving Especially because I like to go to the birth of mine. So I'm going from the birth of mine, like, 20 seconds over to the bank, move everything over, 20 seconds back, and it's like 60 seconds to make a full 28 necklaces. Now on that regard, ruby, diamond, and emerald are like the way to go, if you're a member. If you're a non-member, I can honestly say lapras is a great way to go, but if you are a non-member, jewelry is just going to be a really hard thing to do. Um, in that regard, like, adamant shields, though, are definitely the way. Grapes and adamant shields will sell for the most. You can make the most money off of those two items early game, hands down. Unless there is something else which you can comment that tells me better, these have been the ways I have made the most money in the game. Which, keep in mind, I've only made, like, 14 to, well, no, I made 14 mil plus about 6, so about 20 mil in the last week or so, so that is definitely something to keep in mind. And really, I mean, you're, you're grinding out your skills while you're doing it. You're going to be skilling anyways. Um, I would definitely avoid lockets, rings, and the wrist pieces. Just go with the necklaces because they sell for the most and they give you a decent amount of experience. Uh, access to the Crafters Guild, the Smithers Guild, all of that is going to be quintessential to what you want to do because all of these things make it much easier for the end result. And if you hear the squeaking of my chair, I am super sorry. I'm probably not going to edit this out because I am just going on a one-stop tangent roll tonight, and I'm happy about it. And honestly... I don't care. I think it's fun. I'm playing RuneScape. I'm having fun. I'm not really, uh, I'm not really bothered by it. But what you really gotta watch out for is that, at least in my appear, or my proximity, is that there are so many cosmetic items that are nice. Jagex knows what they're doing. And every time I look in there, I'll type in, like, ah, yes, I want a token for something. And I find, like, five other items that I find really cool. 
Like, there's a beach outfit, a casual beach outfit that you can get that's basically... It is gonna make you look like Luffy if you have the motor hat. It is amazing. I love it. In that regard, though, I am dead set on getting all of my money without the use of anyone but the people in my clan. And we have an unofficial clan at the moment, which we call ourselves the Jeweled Order of the Shield Grape. If you just listen to any of that rampaging tangent I was just on, it's all items that we massively sell, and it makes me happy. And overall, it's just a great expression to go down, because we're making money, we're having fun, and then we get off and we've made millions more in a couple hours than what we had before. RuneScape aside, I think one of the other things I've been doing a lot lately is really getting into different fighting anime, and it seems really funny, but in my own, I see, I like to get into creative writing, see, I'm, I'm ranking my own TRPG, which I'll talk about in a bit, but that is essentially the gateway for me to get into funny anime and shit, and the one that I have found very hilarious, but I don't talk about it often, but I, I, I guess I should for the sake of trending, is Baki the Grappler. I don't like Baki because I think it's realistic. I don't like Baki because I think it's good animation. I like Baki because every time I pause Baki the Grappler, I have found some form of analog horror waiting to happen. And I'm a big fan of analog horror. My wife and I, we have watched all of it from Greylock, Gemini Productions, and Monument Mythos. I love it all. In fact, if you've got any recommendations for any good ones, put them in the comments. I want to watch them. But, Baki the Grappler is the greatest analog horror to be published by Netflix. Because the things you will see in that series are wild. It ranges from everything from a man being shot in the face and shrugging it off to the point that he, he's just got surgery. He's just got scar marks over this. He took like an entire like clipper magazine, whatever we want to call it, worth of ammunition in the face and he was like, yeah, I'm fine with that. But oh my lord. The true analog horror. The true SCP. Because he, he needs to be secured, contained, and protected. Is Yujiro Han. I don't know if if you haven't seen the series, you should go watch it for two reasons. Yujiro Hanma and a guy named Dory. Which it's, it's tragic what they do to the man, but I absolutely adore both of those characters. Because they are both terrifying. They, If you met them in the back alley, you would probably be on a Ripley's Believe It or Not episode afterwards. And I don't undermine that by any extent. If you survive, you are not going to be believed for telling this tale. It is like walking in on Men in Black and Aliens. But the thing that gets me the most with Baki is that like the fights themselves aren't actually that interesting. It is that with every hit, with every time you think a character is done, there's a face to be made that tells you that it's not over. And I strive in a fight. I strive that if I ever have to get in a physical altercation with a human being again, that I can elicit the power of either Jack or Yujiro Hanma to just make an entirely disturbing face, look at a caveman from primitive times, and in my best Texan accent, you want to have a bite? Contest. Like, this is by far the most terrifying thing I have ever seen. The amount of bacterial germs between that mouth swap. And yet it happens in a Netflix anime. And that's not even the worst thing. Another one that I like to watch is Kengen Ashura. I like Kengen for a different reason. The faces are wild. But even more so is you have the most wild fighter backstories and stuff and, like, different things. Like, you know, a pro wrestler that just is able to casually compete with a world mercenary and all of that. And it's fine. It's fun. 
we all love to watch it. But the intrigue in that versus, like, it, in the movie, that they mix the two together, because I'm going to get to this one soon. The intrigue they have for Ken Ganeshura is literally like, oh, this man, he's been put in a position that he doesn't want. And everyone here at these rich events, they see him as though he is some kind of shrewd businessman. He's just shaking with excitement. And it's just ridiculous. But then you have the movie, and you mishmash both of them. You get ridiculous animation and ridiculous story with ridiculous intrigue, and somehow they don't work, and I'm not the first person to say that. And most of the people I've talked to just think that the movie is terrible, and I have to agree with it. Like, quite literally, it's just... I... I hear... I know there's... I don't know if it's canon or not, but I've like I've heard there's like a Street Fighter Kengen thing, and I really would like to see that more because I think that just seeing more saw pang energy is what we need. Like I don't know, I hate saw pang, but every time I say I hate saw pang, I find myself going, yeah, but you know he really does liven up a room, doesn't he? I think he's just that annoying coworker that we notice when he's not around. But, uh, yeah, I am interested in that regard. If anyone's got any, like, interesting plot points for Baki or Kengen that you guys thought was interesting that should be talked about. For me, I, uh, I don't like certain depictions from the Baki series, particularly with the Caveman Pickle. But at the same time, I am also willing to accept that in a world where we have stunned by political correctness, we have men with guns cannot stop obvious crime. Uh, that aside though, because I don't feel like that's a good YouTube topic, I feel like both of them are great creative writing-wise if you want to make a great goofy concept. But speaking of creative writing, I would like to start talking about my concept, New Doggerland. So the series I want to talk about is for a unofficial sponsor is me, my series, my idea. You're on my YouTube channel, and it's not big enough for sponsors yet. So sponsor time. Evil Entertainment Incorporated, New Doggerland, the TRPG that's yet to be, but you should probably think about it. I have created a concept mixing the idea of the ancient Falklands known as Doggerland. It's currently a bay in Europe. If it was suddenly drained by an oceanic dam, it would create a huge problem for Germany. It would be landlocked. Oh no, it's almost that anyways. So, with rising sea levels and rising diesel technology, how will World War I play out? Will you fight on the side of the new Doggerland military, a nation founding itself on the pioneer brisk of a British culture and German efficiency? Or will you be part of the motherland of Germany, trying to break free of its international threats and make its way towards the ocean once more? With its forgotten fleet and New Doggerland's pioneer corpse, you're bound to find everything from power armor to the modern battle tank in this unique alternate history take on World War I, Diesel Punk, and Oceania. I have absolutely no other contributors besides myself, my wife, and my friends who have taken the time to peer review it, but I have over 250 pages. We're looking to work on a percentile system so that you can do everything from the individual soldier up to an army-sized battle. We want everything from land, sea, and air, and mixing everything from eventual fantasy down to science and aliens. We have no stops, we don't care about the full logic of it, it just sounds fun and we want to go with it. So, if that sounds like something you're interested in, eventually we're going to be looking to set up crowdfunding for New Doggerland because I have been working on this bad boy for almost a year now and I would love to give it out to the general public. Again, this idea is 
a diesel punk, high oceanic technology world where a new nation has sprouted up out of the very sea itself as though it were some kind of Atlantis and now we're trying to pioneer our way through society. Go on through and enjoy the new Doggerland military. Moving on from alternate history to actual history, I'd like to move into some of the ideas that I would like to cover. I think that we get a lot of terrible people that get coverage that are historically famous, but I don't think that the less terrible people get covered enough. For instance, you have a lot of just scammers and people who have done a lot of... I don't even know what to exactly describe it as. It's just like... For instance, you've got people like Mother Teresa, where on one hand they were very influential people, but through their deception were able to just cause a lot of mayhem behind the lines. And then you've got just a lot of historical figures. I mean, everyone knows Ivan the Terrible, but I mean, Alexander the Great is also known as Alexander the Terrible, so it's one of those that, if you go back historically, how many people do we look at as idols that are not so much so? And I would like to make that alternative flip side to my idolized history series. Which on that front, I have been thinking of a lot of different characters, and I really think that, and I hate to call them characters, but people, but a lot of them, they do characterize history so much so that I consider them as much. But I feel like in the coming months I want to focus on a lot of women and people of color, not for any kind of clout, but I think the whole Project 2025 thing that I've seen a lot of, like I don't want to get up too much on a political thing, but I think in a time like this it really does kind of hammer the need where we need to talk about how it's, it's not new that people have been doing what they're doing now. Like, it's not new. It, it might be new that it's on television. It might be new that you have to accept it, but people have been here. We've had amazing women and amazing people of color. We've had amazing people who have shaped our society that unfortunately in a biased world there wasn't a lot of information on then. But we have a hell of a lot more now, and in a time where people are trying to erase that and bring us back to what is quite frankly a romanticized version of a pipe dream that never happened. And if it, and I'm not saying like the hardships never did happen, but what they're envisioning never happened. There was no happy cornball 20s and 30s. Like, we were all fighting prohibition, getting drunk and doing whatever in the 20s through 30s and 40s because we were in between two terrible wars. So, I, I don't think that microcosm of events, or really a macrocosm, is going on to the point to recreate those events. And even if they did, there's just some aspects that could just go in the trash. And I believe that with all my heart. So, I think historically talking about people like... Recently I saw something that made me really interesting, or interested about the Victorian strong women that, you know, you see that it's not new. They've been around for hundreds of years where people literally have broken the standard and status quo. You had the African Wall Street, which was an amazing economic growth, and then that got torn down. There's countless Native American doctors, scholars, and philosophers that have gone on to be broken down, and I don't want to just take it as a Caucasian person taking away from that, because I'd like to pick people that I find interesting without trying to jump onto someone else's bandwagon. So, if you have any suggestions, but I don't do them, it's not because I'm trying to exclude anyone, it's either I would find it disrespectful for myself to cover it, or that I could not find enough information on these individuals. Um, otherwise, I feel like the same thing as 
like the John Stark video, I would like to continue on with that. It's just a little slow going right now because recording is hard having a little three year old tearing through the house. But isn't that the joy of parenting? And I love it. I think another aspect of my content that I would like to discuss with really myself, I guess at this point, but if anyone wants to comment, is really how I go forward with my fantasy outlet or stuff. I have a large plethora of knowledge when it comes to fantasy design, both from a mythological aspect, having learned about it in history classrooms, as well as I play a lot of tabletops like d and I'm a nerd, true and true, I don't, I don't deny it in any aspect, so quite frankly, I guess what I want to see is more what others are interested in, what lores do you guys want to explore, because I want to stop touching just a pinpoint section of fantasy and I would like to look at an overarching lore and make like larger videos like I'm a big fan of like the Warhammer 40k people who like I don't want to step on their toes because I feel like I could not produce content as good as other people in that department but they make such amazing lore videos and I would really love to get in on making something in my own sphere that's even remotely similar like Maybe not the voice acting, because I don't think I could pull that off as well. But just the genuine ability to understand and envelop oneself in the lore, that is just something that I love doing genuinely like, overall. It's why I became a game journalist, because I thought that I'd be able to go way deeper into the lore and just delve in and actually talk to the developers and see what they meant behind it. Because art's got an image, but it's always, you know, we perceive it, and then the artist perceives it how they do, and sometimes it's not the same, which is a really interesting aspect of art. I really love that, but I'm really bad at art at the same time, so it infuriates me that other people are better at it. Not that I'm jealous, it's just, I want to draw too. <laughs> And I feel that with fantasy stuff moving forward, I could make more content centered around stuff like the archetypes of dragons and the archetypes of undead and things like that. But I feel like there are better YouTubers like Dungeon Dad that are more capable of it. So really, I don't think I need to touch on that unless there's stuff that I find that can't be touched on by them. And in that regard, I think the next fantasy species I will touch on is one I tried to get on there, and that is going to be the Aspis, because they are a super interesting thing. They are not a weird thing that I'm sure you think by their name. They're basically a type of weevil folk, and they like to do some singing and I will make a full video on them eventually. Another type of thing that I really would love to make is something on the Demiurge, because that is actually from my religion, and I find that to be a super interesting concept as part of what got me into fantasy as a child because of the story of the Demiurge, and I think that it would just be super great to do a video on, the same way that John Stark got me into history, this got me into fantasy. I think the next thing I want to do to try to work on my channel is kind of just tighten up on making some short form content, like, I don't know, YouTube Shorts and TikTok, I mean, they seem to be a really good way to attract attention to your channel, and really that's the big issue I have right now, I suck at advertising, I suck at putting myself out there, so maybe the shorts will make it easier for me to do that. I've seen a lot of stuff where it's like they've only got one thing up and it's like, ooh man, I saw that. And then it turns out to be a big channel. So I am thinking of doing it. If anyone has concept ideas or anything they want to suggest, I would love to hear it because obviously if it's content you want to see, it's content I will get views for. And really that's just kind of how I like to do things. I don't see it for the monetary game. I think that's why I don't want to start a Patreon, but the viewership would allow me to get the ad revenue, which would 
definitely be able to be something. Because at the end of the day, I'm sure I'm going to always be working and trying to get something, but I'm going to be working nights, hopefully, and pretty soon, so I can take care of my kid during the day, so I can do things like live streams, and as he gets older, he's not as screechy, that's why I don't like to record during the day, because he makes it difficult, but he's a good boy, and one day we're all going to be in a much happier situation, and he's not going to be as upset, because right now he just wants to play jammers all the time. Some days I'll just focus on combat, and other days I'll just focus on crafting. I really like that. I really like that you can just do some smithing and go off and do your dishes and come back, and it's like, oh man, I just have to click the mouse. And it's pretty nice. Uh, I really enjoy the fact that the community is just super kind. I haven't met a single person that I'm like, oh, it's that guy. But at the same time, I do have a couple complaints. Uh, I don't like the fact that I can only carry 28 of a single item in one thing. I think that more items should be stackable. My wife tried the game and she basically said the first that same thing in the first like 10 minutes. It's kind of wild. Uh, I think also that the amount of items that aren't available in the grand market is kind of wild. Like, there's like a skeleton shirt and pants that I really wanted and it's like, no, no, no. Not in the global market. Not allowed. And I'm 
like, oh, okay. That's, I get it. I, I mean, I come from Gaia Online. That was one of my first major websites where you could do active trading. And I'm used to everything. Every little item besides a few soul-bound ones were worth trading. So maybe that's me that needs to get over it. But I kind of wish that there was just more things on the market tradable. I mean, once a token's used, it's used. I totally get that. But that's why you then rush an event out to make a few more. Otherwise, I really dislike that runic gear is hidden behind a quest being the last amount of gear for people before Dragon Slayer. That is, er, before the free-to-play is out. That is kind of wild to me. I think that's not good. But at the same time, I kind of get it. Like, from this perspective, I haven't done much of the questing because I like to make my own stuff. So, why do I have to then stop everything and level up a bunch of skills I haven't leveled up yet to go do the Dragon Slayer quest? It's fine. I'll handle it. I've got what I've got all, and I prefer a tuxedo anyways. But when I do go into dungeons, I like to bring my adamant armor. I would love to bring runic armor, but I would have to do a whole other quest to get there. And I just think that's a little weird. But overall, I think that this game is highly addictive. I think it's probably one of the better games I've ever played, and I'm kind of kicking myself in the ass for not playing it sooner, because I have been able to meet a lot of great people. I've been able to really just enjoy myself. I don't really get mad at the game the way that I would at like War Thunder or even something like a fucking fighting game, which, oh god forbid, I play fighting games. It's not Soul Calibur. It's not a good fighting game. Well, hell is war. But I think that this game has this perfect balance between oh shit, it's PvP if you go out in the wilderness, and oh shit, it's combat, to oh shit, I get to craft. And I can appreciate that heavily. Just please work on the backpack size. I could just say if everyone got 30 spaces, make it even. Why 28? Why 28? It gives me such a headache. Oh, because by the way, if you could carry 120 ore, 30 is divisible by 120. It would give you 4 loads. So if you're getting ore, it would make 4 loads instead of 5. That's a half load. It's weird. But anyways, folks, we are coming to the end of the crafting here. We are getting finally out of all of the rubies that I have not decided to grind. Craft the 